it's here! It's finally here! The fifth anniversary of VGIW starting in October 2018! Five years of VGIW and we're not stopping yet. We got an amazing celebration for you here tonight. Let's do this! And our first match, the first match we ever showed on VGIW, it's VVC versus Ace the Tank Barky in a hardcore match! Now back then, I believe that was for the Hardcore Championship as, v as Ace the Tank Barky was the first ever Hardcore Champion at the time. Oh man, the, the, the height of that championship has gone since those days. Might be one of the most prestigious belts right now. Now here is VVC. And let's just take a look back at how VVC looked back then. Still funky, still groovy. But you might notice VVC in much better shape nowadays compared to back then. VVC has, you know, he's always a fun party animal. He's always enjoying himself. But he's definitely taken you know, wrestling seriously enough to make sure that he's in good enough shape to really bring great performances in the ring. Honestly, he's a lot of fun to watch and it's been a great five years with BBC, it must be said. BBC, happy as ever to be here. Honestly, a joy to have around. The BBC certainly looks ready to go here. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. All of these are going to be rematches from the very first episode of VGIW. Let me tell you, we've been doing a lot of that throughout this month. You know, a lot of looking back at some of the landmarks of VGIW, but this is looking back five years into the future, really. And here is Ace the Tank Barky. And looking at him, not a lot has changed. Ace the Tank Barky found what worked and has rolled with it to tremendous success. Many belts have been won by Ace the Tank Barky and I gotta remind you of many a first here in VGIW. The first ever VGIW GHK Hardcore Champion. The first ever Limit VGIW Limitless World Champion. And the first ever VGIW Bulldog Breed Champion. Ace the Tank Barky has had many firsts here and honestly that tremendous success is because he is one of the, you know, he is, you know, he's a, a master of all. He has got so many moves in his repertoire that makes him a genuine threat to anyone that goes up against him. You might be able to win, but you're going to have to give it your all against Ace. And VVC, the first one to really get to know that here on TV. Ace and VVC certainly look ready. This is going to be fun. Remember, this is a rematch from the very first episode five years ago. Our oh, VVC right here. This is a definite change up from what happened back then. As back then, Ace absolutely destroyed VVC. But VVC is actually getting the upper hand here early on. Although Ace, oh, ready to take control of the matchup now. And look at this. Ace the tag Barky showing his abilities. Now, I think Ace has actually, um, paradoxically to VVC losing weight, I think Ace has gained a little bit. But Ace is still just as dangerous as ever. My goodness, springboard moves! My god, Ace! His moveset continuously just continues to... It just expands constantly. If you've ever seen Ace, like, the thing about Ace that makes it so crazy is... I remember, like... You know, in 2K18 especially, it, we were seeing all kinds of new moves, new ways of ending matches. And I remember, like, the crazy thing is about Ace is he gets one move set and that's that. But the way that Ace wrestles, you wouldn't believe that he only has one move set per game. You wouldn't believe that because the way he wrestles, really, it just blows your mind. He rarely ever has his move set altered, yet he's so incredibly capable. That's what makes Ace so damn dangerous. 
He is so smart at what he does. The VVC there with that nice dodge there. VVC has gotten a lot more capable since those early days. So Ace has got to be careful here. And VVC's already looking. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. Ace jumped right on top of VVC there. Oh, now here we go. Back and forth here. Look at this. Big backdrop. Good work there from VVC. And now VVC going to look for a weapon. No, he's changed his mind. He's going to focus on Ace. Maybe the smartest choice here. Look at that snap, Meg. Good work. And now snap in the neck. Oh! No cannon, no DQ in this matchup. Oh, right across the leg. Trying to weaken Ace before taking before they'll eventually have to take it back into the ring to finish this. And now VVC, it looks like he might finally be looking for a weapon. What is he gonna pull out? Oh, it's a sledgehammer! Oh, right in the midsection! And again! Oh! Ace managed to barely dodge that one. And he wrestles away, wrestles that sledgehammer out of the grasp of VVC. Now remember, after, you know, that, you know, coming soon is the next big event of VGIW, the World League Tournament. The World League event is the old, is the very first big pay-per-view event of VGIW. And this is the fourth one. It's going to be an amazing one. It's had some great champions crowned. It's for the world titles, and it's such a big opportunity. We had that built up. We built up the contenders for that last month. It's just going to be a fun time overall. Oh, good lord. I cannot wait to see how that all builds up. Oh, my goodness. And now, wait a minute. VVC grabbing a sledgehammer. Oh, Ace dodges barely and begins fighting again against the VVC. Oh! Oh no, Ace has the sledgehammer right across the leg. And that's a very good choice there by Ace. VVC relies on his, his, his nimble ability in order to get through this. And Ace has deliberately, deliberately targeted Ace's, VVC's strongest move. Oh, strength, strongest asset. And now look at this. Oh, VVC celebrating, but Ace is already back up. And VVC, oh my goodness. You should never give Ace an opening. Ace is so damn dangerous. Oh, Snake Eyes. Oh! Going for a pin here, but that's way that is way too presumptuous to think that VVC is going to go down like that. There's the kick out. And now Ace. Oh, no. Going for an armbar. Look at this. Going for an armbar. You can see VVC trying to get those legs over to the ropes, but it's not quite reaching. I don't know if there's even rope breaks in a hardcore match, so I don't know if it's ever going to matter anyway. So VVC is going to have to escape like he is now. There you see VVC with the escape. Oh, look at this. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, nice punches to the gut there from VVC. Now stomping away. Oh, this is very nicely done. This is a lot closer than their match back in the day. VVC looking for another weapon. He's got to go quick here. He's got a chair. He's got a chair. And Ace. <gasps> BBC setting it up in the corner here. Oh. Oh! Whoa! I think he just knocked Ace out. One, two, three. Oh, no. Two and a half. Two and three quarters, maybe. But not a three. So, BBC. Oh, here we go. Irish whip. Over the ropes here. But Ace there with the reversal. And now, wait a minute. Oh! Good Lord. Sending VVC up and over. Oh, an old school move that Ace used to put away many a match. Cattle mutilation. Stretching on the arms. Look at that position there. Well, the referee's butt is in the way, but VVC is in a lot of pain right now. VVC didn't tap, but he might have passed out from the pain. One, two, three. Ace wins. The more things change, the more they stay the same. VVC put up a much better performance this time than he did in episode one of VGIW, but Ace is still one of the most dangerous wrestlers in the promotion for a reason. One of the most capable, most just efficient wrestlers you'll witness. One of the greatest all-rounders of all time. Ace the Tank Barkey, still a dangerous force in that ring, but I gotta give it to VVC. 
VVC has definitely come a ways since that time. And that led to a great opening encounter. And we got some plenty more amazing matches for you here tonight. Remember, if you've ever watched episode one of BGIW, every match tonight is a rematch from that episode in celebration of five years. And Ace the Tank Barky is especially happy. This was a good one. This was a very good one, honestly. Congratulations to Ace the Tank Barky. We move on to the next match now, where GHK's general manager, Theodore Cornwall, takes on Canadian Destroyer Promotions men's champion, Gabriel Walker. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one. Both of these wrestlers have since moved from VGIW to other promotions on the channel. Theodore Cornwall here is in charge of Guerrilla Hardcore Combat, aka GHK. And under Theodore Cornwall's control, like him or not, a lot has changed in that time. And a lot has changed with Theodore, as you can see. Back then known as Theodore Franklin, Cornwall has re has decided to go back with his real name here. Cornwall is honestly... He, he's old, but he is tough as anything. And he is just... He refuses to die. And with his curb stomp finisher, don't count Theodore out here. He had a big match at one Hall of Glory event against Greg and Theodore has shown that he still has a lot that he can give against younger wrestlers but if I had to pick who I think is going to win this one it would be the the man at the top of the men's division in Canadian Destroyer Promotions another show on the VGIW channel Gabriel Walker Gabriel has come such a ways Starting off as an indie rookie, while he has gone back to the indies here in VG on VGIW's channel with Canadian Straw Promotions, he has established himself as one of the top stars. Here's how he looked back in the day. And I've got to tell you, this might be one of the biggest, bigger glow ups on the episode. Because look at him now. Gabriel Walker really looks like a genuine main eventer. Now, I don't like to gossip too much. But I have it on good authority. I have heard behind the scenes that the board of Jim Blanc, Irma Stoms, and Eric Schwartz, they've got their eye on Gabriel Walker. They want him back on VGIW. Now, I don't know what Gabriel's thoughts are on returning to VGIW. Obviously, right now, he's loyal to Canadian Destroyer Promotions as their top champion, totally respectable. But clearly, it's not the bad blood that he had about being underutilized by VGIW, clearly it's a little he's a little softer on VGIW if he's willing to come back for the anniversary episode. Here we go. Now this really is the past meeting the future here. One of the big rising stars in professional wrestling and Gabriel Walker taking on a former multi-time world champion in Theodore Cornwall. Now I want to make it clear that Canadian Destroyer Promotions, due to it being purely in Canada, um, the Canadian Destroyer Promotions Canadian Championship is not considered a world title, so Gabriel is not yet a world champion. But still, Gabriel absolutely establishing himself as a future main event level contender, in my opinion. He's been finding some big name wrestlers, in my opinion. And I think, like, and I feel confident in calling him the future of professional wrestling. He is one of those future stars, in my opinion. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, he did miss the mark there on that Springboard Moonsault, though. But as long as there are wrestlers biting to try and get their way to the top, there are going to be wrestlers like Theodore, you know, the, the old journeyman, the old guard that are going to try to, you know, be the gatekeepers for professional wrestling. Theodore did the exact same thing back in Episode 1, Wanting to see if Gabriel was good enough. Now, Gabriel, I believe, won that match back then. But Theodore, just because times have changed, because five, just because five years have passed, doesn't mean that Theodore's going to let up. That doesn't mean Theodore is going to just let Gabriel, you know, win. Oh, man. If Theodore had his way, he would still be main inventing. He'd still be competing for the world title. Ooh. 
Okay, so Gabriel back in control here. It's looking good right at the moment. Theodore getting back on his feet. But Gabriel looking to try and remain in control here. With some nice shots here. And a DDT. And that was wonderfully delivered. Back in the day, Theodore would have been out for a 10 count after being hit with that. But times have changed. There's the kick out. And there, snapping the neck. Good work there by Gabriel. Who now looks to go up to the top row. You've got to think Gabriel. Not only rep... You know, there's so much that's riding on Gabriel winning here. Gabriel representing Canadian Destroyer Promotions. You know with this as their t as one of their top champions. Oh my god, what a slam there from Theodore. But Gabriel, also representing himself. Like I said, the reason he left for Canadian Destroyer Promotions was because he felt underutilized by VGIW. He became a trainer for the training center, which, you know, is understandable if you're like Dennis Finch or Venom, you know, someone who maybe their best years are behind them. You know, maybe they'll have a match every now and then, but their best years are behind them. Of course, they're going to be trainers to pass their knowledge on. But Gabriel, as young as he was, with that expansive knowledge base, you, you know, it, it, you know, I can see why Gabriel felt like he'd been wrongly done. Whoa, nice work there. Very nicely done by Gabriel Walker. And Gabriel, you know, wanted to make it clear that he was not about to just become... You know, a back, you know, become a background piece to help other wrestlers. I think Gabriel liked helping other people, but he wasn't going to let it happen at the expense of his own career and prospects. And Gabriel has so far proven himself in a major way, in my opinion, becoming Canadian Straw Promotions Canadian, you know, men's Canadian champion, and getting eyes put back on him by some of the top people in VGIW. If there really is. You know, if they really are looking to bring Gabriel back, you know, then that to me is is Gabriel has truly proven himself. But of course, Theodore, maybe not as much of a believer as the VGOW board is. And if he, you know, we've seen Theodore get far more skeptical of some of the future prospects of professional wrestling. You remember that Curtis Burton, someone who managed to go for the world title, didn't win it, but got very close. It has been a struggle for Curtis to be given another opportunity, thanks to the tyrannical reign of Theodore Cornwall. Theodore's done a lot of good in GHK, but he definitely does not respect some of the rising stars in GHK as much as others. Oh, look at this. Oh, stiff forearms to the back of Gabriel there. Oh, the knees. That was very well done. Gabriel might be in deep trouble right now as Theodore is looking to try and put Gabriel away. But Gabriel refusing to back down. Look at that. Flinging Theodore through the air there. Just from the power of his legs. Oh, Gabriel's had middling luck in this match, high flying. Oh, and it still doesn't quite work. Gabriel might be getting a bit of nervousness. It's been a while since he's been in front of a crowd this big. And again, there's so much riding on this. Maybe the pressure is getting to Gabriel here. Because again, he has had so much to prove. Every match he's had has been to prove that he's not just full of hot air, that he really does have the potential to be one of the best here. And so he's got to think that a match, like he, if he loses this match, then a lot of people are going to be doubting him. A lot of people probably already do doubt him. Unfortunately, that, could, that pressure is leading to Gabriel making some key mistakes that the veteran in Theodore is able to capitalize on. Oh, look at this. Oh, snapping the neck there. And it's not looking good for Gabriel. Theodore looking to put this away. But Gabriel with the elbows to the head. Good work there. But Theodore with the dodge. And now, oh, look at this. Choking Gabriel. Choking at him. And then with a stiff punch to the gut there. Remember, Theodore knows what it's like to have been at the top. He's a multi-time world champion in the days of terrific Texas wrestling. 
But Gabriel looking for that front flip DDT. Boom! Right on the head. Right on the head. This match might be over. Here we go. One. Two. No. Theodore kicks out. Gabriel was certain that was going to do it. But he's got one more ace up his sleeve. Here we go. Time for the pedigree. Oh, face first. Lights out. This is over. For sure this is over now. One, two, three. Gabriel wins. And that, you know, while Gabriel had some shaky moments in that match, like I said, I think the pressure got to him at times. He was still able to bounce back. He was still able to prove himself, in my opinion. Gabriel Walker as is one of the rising stars here on the channel. One of the top stars in Canadian Destroyer Promotions. And if he does really get an offer for the, a contract here at VGIW, then I think eventually those nerves are going to fade. Eventually that, you know, he's going to be just as confident here as he is in Canadian Destroyer Promotions. And I think that's when he really will come into his own. I think that's when we'll see the era of Gabriel Walker really come into, come into play here. But this was a big match. And congratulations to the Canadian Destroyer Promotion Men's Canadian Champion for winning this one. The past is gone. The future is here. Gabriel, thank you, thank you for coming to join us in celebrating five years. We're now moving on to a tables match as Cliff Cruz and Herman are ready to duke it out. Now, Cliff Cruz is one of the many wrestlers that we just haven't seen in a long while. But I am glad to get that we get to see the return of Cliff Cruz for this one. Cliff Cruz is here. He looks ready. He looks excited. Oh, he's ready to go here against Herman. And now we let's take a look back on the clock. Gabe, you know, Cliff had a, a notably different look. Similar to Gabriel, a indie wrestler that got brought up to the big time here in VGIW. Now Cliff has had some middling success, but he's always been incredibly entertaining. That's one thing I've always said about him, is Cliff is one of those wrestlers where even in losing performances, has always been incredibly fun to watch in the ring. And his first ever match was against Herman. It was a crazy outcome, as Herman actually won with a fall away slam through the table. I didn't think that would be possible, but landed the mark. Cliff looking quite good right now. And he looks ready to go in this one. But will he be able to win against the giant Herman? Here he is. Herman is ready. And let us take a look back. Herman actually looked a little rougher back then. I think Herman was ready in that moment. I think that he was thinking he was ready to hang his boots up. And while I think Herman will eventually retire sooner rather than later, I think being in VGIW gave Herman the boost that he needed to last a little longer in this last stretch of his career. Thanks to that, the Giant has continued to be an incredibly entertaining watch. Herman has won big here in VGIW. He's won some notable matches, won some notable titles. Herman's last run in professional wrestling might be one of his greatest. I don't know when he plans on leaving, but he has made it clear. Well, his performance has made it clear that we will deeply miss when that day, you know, miss him when that day comes. Now in a tables match, the rules are simple. It's not won by pinfalls or submissions. It's won by sending your opponent through a table. And honestly, I think this is going to be a good one. As you can see, Cliff Cruz, oh, trying to dominate the Giants. But Herman in firm control here. Look at that, throwing Cliff Cruz. Now I don't see any of the tables at the moment. I think I might see a little bit one there. Oh, there is one there. But look at this from Herman. My goodness. 
All right, going up. Wait, he's going up to the top rope. We definitely didn't see this from him back in the day. Like I said, I think Herman was about ready to p hang the boots up, but he's really, oh, but he's really been reinvigorated by his time here in VGIW. So Cliff Cruz in the driver's seat now, in control. Oh, but Herman's getting back up. Oh, slapped in the face. Now some stiff chest chops. And Herman left unsure what to do. What a Northern Light suplex from Cliff Cruz. And now Cliff going for the arm bar. Stretching the arm, trying to weaken Herman. Make it less likely that he'll be able to win this match. But Herman now managing to escape with some nice strikes there. Cliff looking to be in a bit of trouble right now. Oh, look at this, into the corner, throwing Cliff Cruz aside. And now Herman to the outside, grabbing one of the tables. There's more under the ring, but a tables match, we usually have two standing by the side of the ring just to give easy access in these matches. Big backbreaker there. And now that gives Herman a chance to, is he going for the other one? I think he is, he is, he's going for the second one. This is interesting. And Cliff grabbing the other one that Herman already left in. He threw it at Herman. I don't think Herman took that too lightly. Oh, what a big boot there. And Cliff flopped around like a fish out of water. And there you see Herman setting up that table. Oh, dodging. Nice shit work there. Oh, those stiff strikes by Herman. My word. Oh, the claw squeezing down on the skull. That massive hand of Herman. You know, rare, you know, the claw really has found a second life here in VGIW. And you got to think with those massive hands of Herman, that does a lot of damage. Cliff, oh, wait a minute, Cliff. Setting Herman into the table. Could this be the end? Could this be the end? There's a big chest chop, but the table remains unrelenting. Cliff looking under the ring. Pulling out a third table. They only need one. But Cliff here definitely sending a message here. Oh. But a back and forth here now with the strikes. Look at this. Whoa, what a release suplex. And now Herman grabbing the other table here. Setting it up in another corner. And now grabbing Cliff. But Cliff there with the kick. And now Cliff. Going back to the outside, grabbing that third table, and now bringing it into the ring where he's going to meet Herman, but Herman catching Cliff here. Oh! Suplexing him on that static table. Oh, God, all that weight down on the face. Oh my God, he threw Cliff like it was nothing. Absolutely incredible there. Oh no, look at this, another claw to the skull of Cliff Cruz. Those giant hands squeezing down. And Cliff, he is looking in dire straits right now. But Cliff continuing to fight back with everything he's got. Some stiff strikes. Oh, but Herman there with the dodge. Herman taking Cliff into the table. Oh no, here we go. Another release move. Exploder suplex through the table. The match is over. The match is over. Herman wins. Herman wins. So far, so far, each match has ended the same way. Gabriel beat Theodore. Ace beat VVC. And Herman beat Cliff. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make it clear. We're not looking to replicate the results of each match. That's just how things are rolling right now in this one. Herman showing that even though this might be the last run of his wrestling career it's been five years so far and still plenty more to come from the Giants. Herman has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is he lives and breathes wrestling he is gonna he has got plenty more in him and I'm excited to see what the future holds. Now this is going to be a um, very interesting one to look at the before and after of. It's Terry Adams versus Aaron Storm. Okay, this one I'm very curious on. 
So let's look here. This is what Terry Adams looked like back in the day as an unsigned jobber for Aaron Storm. And here is two-time world champion, the ball, Terry Adams, two-time VGIW men's world champion. One of the greatest Cinderella stories in VGIW history. Someone who started as an unsigned jobber. Someone who was certain to be relegated to the dustbin of history as merely a footnote, a jobber to lose to Aaron Storm. He has managed to make himself a mainstay, one of the top stars of VGIW. Someone who's going to have a long, successful career. He's had a long, successful career across these five years. It's truly incredible to see the renovations that Terry Adam has made to himself to bring himself to that point. It's so good to see him. I'm always happy to see how far Terry has come. Now a person who honestly didn't need to go as, go to have a transformation has somehow took himself even further. My God, here is Aaron Storm, leader of Storm System Worldwide. Let's dial back. And this is what he looked like back in the day. Chiseled, clearly ill-gotten. I didn't think he could get even worse than this. I didn't think he could get even buffer than that. But the new Aaron Storm has pushed things to a whole other level. Now, let me tell you, if you think it can't get much worse than he did back in the day, wait till you see that robe taken off. Aaron Storm has ballooned absolutely ballooned in size I am honestly slightly terrified about what you know about how this match is gonna go two wrestlers that have gone incredible transformations uh, Terry Adams becoming from a jobber to a bona fide main eventer Aaron Storm who's also a former world champion has become a freak of nature. An absolute terrifying individual. Aaron Storm. Look at that. The ego on Aaron. Somehow bigger than the muscles on his body. Whew. This is going to be interesting. To see how this one shakes out. Aaron his alley up face buster is ruthless. It has done tremendous damage to many a wrestler. But Terry Adams looks ready to go here against Aaron. And there you see what I was on about. That is horrifying. But Terry Adams ready to clash here against Aaron Storm. Now I know for a fact that Terry Adams has wanted this match for a very long time. He wants to prove that how much has changed since those days and you're seeing it already back in the day i remember terry adams basically got nothing in on aaron and here we see terry adams in control here in the early stages of this matchup you saw that aaron tried to bounce back but terry adams maintaining control so far in this encounter if he can keep this up then terry adams might just have this match already oh there's a kick there from aaron looking to try and regain control back and forth now Terry's beginning to lose control of the match as Aaron now looks to all oh, gain control. Oh, he's clubbing blows to the chest. And Terry with nowhere to go, being restrained by Aaron. Aaron Storm bringing down the pain and Terry collapsing to the outside. Oh, look at this. Going for the leg. What is he doing? Oh, no. Oh, he's going for a figure four on the outside. Remember, there's a they risk being counted out, but Aaron, I don't think that he's bothered about that right now. Wait a minute, Terry turning it around, and the pain courses over to Aaron, who quickly makes his escape. Smart work there by the ball. Oh, but Aaron there with a huge strike, dazing Terry Adams, who holds onto the barricade for support, but now, oh, send it to that same barricade. And now, oh, grabbing the nose, Aaron Storm. That's dirty there. That is straight dirty from Aaron Storm. It's Terry Adams, though, refusing to back down, still fighting back here. And now, 
Look at this, going to the barricade. Oh, face first. Got to be careful. They risk being counted out here. Oh, count of seven. Terry Adams getting back into the ring. Aaron Storm getting back to his feet. And Terry Adams telling Aaron it's over. Aaron getting back in. Oh, here we go, grappling. Aaron there lifting Terry up in the air, driving him down. Aaron did that with such ease. And now going for the pin here. One. Only a one count. Very, very interesting. Oh, look at this. Grabbing the nose. Grabbing the nose. And a big paint brushing him. There. That is awful. And now, look at this. Up in the air. Driven down to the knees. Aaron Storm loves to make examples out of his opponents. Oh, God. It's not just a match for Aaron. It's his pride. It's his ego. He doesn't just want to win. He wants to humiliate and dominate his opponents. And Aaron, oh, look at that. Flexing those muscles. He claims that you can get those muscles too if you just follow his exercises and work out, you know, and take the same supplements. Although he's not going to sell you the supplements he takes. Let's put it that way. Certainly isn't vitamins that is getting Aaron that body. No amount of praying is going to get you that point. Oh, here we go. Snap suplex from Terry Adams. Boom! With that boot to the face. And a oh, kick to the arm there. Now, I think the thing for me is, it's you know, the Roids obviously is a terrifying prospect when you look like Aaron Storm. But I don't think it's not so much that that I'm bothered with. It's the dishonesty, really, more than anything, that I've always had a problem with with Aaron. Like, we've had big, buff-built wrestlers. Don't get me wrong. But Aaron claiming, you know, trying to scam the general populace over these years to believing that they too can match his results just from copying his workouts, buying his supplements. Uh, it's just, that's what I really have a problem with. A great sense on there from the bull. One, two, and there's a kick out at two. Definitely not close to over, as that wasn't even a 2.5, let alone a 2.9. That was just a 2.0. Here we go, stomping on the arm there. And now a kick to the back. Right now, the Bull in control of the matchup. But there we see Aaron back on his feet. Nice takedown there with that tackle. Terry Adams has to be careful. If he gets hit with that alley-up face buster, then it'll be over. What a spine buster! Grabbing the leg now. Oh, kick to the back of the leg there. Bringing Terry Adams back to his feet. But Terry there with a reversal. Oh, what a headbutt. Bringing Aaron Storm down from the force of that headbutt. The bull has some mighty horns. And now look at this. Bringing the pain down with those elbows. And now bringing Aaron back to his feet here. Could he be looking to put this one away? I think he is. Oh my god, he's going big here. Look at this on the top. Oh, boom! Planting him down with that DDT. Surely this is over. One, two. No, a kick out there. But Terry Adams does have the Terry Flosion. His last resort is finishing move. And here we go. Smooth as silk. Here we go. No! The reversal! DDT from Aaron Storm! No way! No way! Oh my god, Aaron! Oh my god! No! There's no way! One! Two! Oh my god, a kick out! Terry Adams refusing to die! Refusing to give up! But Aaron Storm still has that alley up face buster. Here we go now. Oh, God. Oh, no. It's over. You might as well get that ball ready for taxidermy after that one. Four. One. Two. No. Two world champions clashing in this one. Terry has won it two times. Aaron has won it once. Oh my god, look at this. Terry refuses to die, refuses to give up. But Aaron Storm 
refuses to relent. Oh, God, what a drop. What is Aaron thinking? Going for an elbow drop. And now again, another deadlift. Look at that. That is a terrifying display. Good God. Terry's in trouble. Not again. Not again. Picking at the corpse of Terry Adams. Like a vulture. And look at that. Aaron actually happy to take a breather. Terry Adams fighting back. Terry Adams with the Terry Flosion, but again, reversal. Oh, that busted him open. Terry Adams nearly got the win out of nowhere, but Aaron Storm might have just knocked him out with that DDT. One, two, three, he did. That's definitely not the result the fans were hoping to see. The fans were hoping that it would finally come full circle with Terry Adams picking up the win, and he very nearly did on two occasions in that match. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Aaron Storm was able to reverse both Terry Flosions. The thing is, Terry Adams come a long way. He's, already, he's proven himself to be a main event, world title level competitor. But Aaron Storm, who has also proven himself to be that level, has also continued to escalate. I believe Terry Adams has it within him to be able to beat Aaron Storm. But that won't be tonight. What a match. What a battle. I feel bad for Terry Adams. But Terry, in my opinion, has earned a lot of people's respect here across the five years of EGIW. Oh my god, that's disgusting. That is horrendous. Aaron is a terrifying creature. You just do a little jig. Right, we're moving on now. It's Donovan Biohazard taking on Hardcore Hank. Oh, man. Now, here's someone maybe hasn't been in the main event scene all too often but someone who has proven that he can be at play at that level but someone who has more specifically proven that he can play politics he can play chess with some of the greats he played hubert constantine when he recruited mark vincent there this might be one of the most cunning men i've ever seen in the world of professional wrestling but let us start take the clock back the reason he's called Biohazard is because that was what his gimmick used to be. A masked wrestler known as Biohazard. Sometimes that gimmick has come out over the years, but after a feud with Hank, that is where Donovan, this version of Donovan Hazard, came out to play. When Hardcore Hank not only beat Donovan in episode one, but in a few in another episode after that tried to end Biohazard's career. That's where Donovan came out to play and where Donovan became a true main event level player. Now here comes Hardcore Hank. As you see, that's how he looked back in the day. He was definitely big and buff, but I'd say he's become a more fully featured article here. He's got the strength, he's got the speed. A multi-time world champion, a multi-time tag champion, Hank has proven himself as one of the best here in VGIW. I may not like him as a person, but damn, I cannot deny that he is one of the greats. And Hank trying to end the career of Donovan led Donovan to becoming the great wrestler that he is now. Oh my goodness! But just because Donovan has grown doesn't mean that Hank is going to make this easy. I think Hank was almost shocked to see Donovan. I wonder if Hank thought that Donovan was just gone after that attack from back in the day. Like the moment Donovan went off his radar, did Hank think he had retired? He couldn't believe that Donovan was back. Now Donovan become a key player in GHK, 
Oh my god! He did have a great run in VJW's Genesis. Oh my goodness, look at this! The way he is dominating Hank right now! This is very interesting. And this is where we get to see the things are not as one-sided as they were back in the day. You know, Donovan Hazard had a pretty decent career before VGIW, but it looked like, you know, a career of fairly decent highs, but nothing truly tremendous was going to come to an end with, like, one last stretch in VGIW. But it almost as if Hank reawoken a spark, really a spark within Donovan. And Donovan's more dangerous now than he has ever been before. One, two, and that is interesting. The fact that he's beaten Hank into that kind of position, that is very curious. Oh. Hank is rarely in such a vulnerable position, and that shows you how strong Donovan has become. But Hank now, look at this, trying to deal with Donovan, but Donovan retaining control at the moment. Things aren't looking good for Hank, and that is not what you'd expect to see. What a clothesline there. Oh, but Keller trying to get Donovan's attention, and Donovan said, Donovan actually showing how in control he is, how level-headed he could be, as all he did was say to Keller, watch this, and he just powerbombed Hank. Hank has bounced back, though, and now in control here. As he goes for the leg. Oh, this match... It's looking to be quite something right here. Oh, right on the arm. But there's a kick there from Donovan. And now against the ropes. Boom, with that big splash. Going for the pinfall now. One, two, and there's the kick out. This is a interesting match to watch right now. Oh, Donovan. Right now, maybe giving Hank a little room to breathe, but Hank wrestling his way back now. Look at this. What is he doing? Oh my goodness! How does he manage to manoeuvre someone as barrel chested, as big and bulky as Donovan like that? Hank really is superhuman. I mentioned the World League Tournament will be taking place. Hank was the very first winner of the World League Tournament. And you'll be seeing the person who entered the first World League Tournament as World Champion. And also will be entering into this one as the world champion, the Reaper, in the main event, the next matchup after this. Whew. Well, sorry, not after this, sorry, we do have another match after this, sorry. Oh man, I've just gotten so caught up in things, I'm so excited for what's to come. Oh, look at this, Blue Thunder Bomb. Shades of Hank's favourite wrestler, Blue Thunder, with that Blue Thunder Bomb, driving the knee into the midsection. Hank Fitz seems firmly in control now of the match. Absolutely suffocating Donovan here. Oh, he's trying to go for a powerbomb, but a big back toss there from Donovan. Good work there by Donovan Hazard. Oh, that super kick. And now, no, Hank manages to get the, his feet under the ropes. But that match has won Donovan matches in the past. That super kick has won him matches in the past. What a headbutt there. Donovan maintaining a cool head, refusing to relent as he keeps the pressure on Hank. And this is definitely different than their initial encounter back in episode one. Another, ca another pin, but again, Hank is way too close to the ropes for Donovan to put this away so easily. Oh, here we go. What is this? Oh my God. No, the Gamma Spike! Not like this! If he wins this match like this, that is going to be shocking. Someone who nearly ended Donovan's career, beaten with... Oh, wait, Keller! Getting Donovan's attention! I was going to say, if, ha if Donovan manages to win with no... You know, giving Hank no reverence, that would have been shocking to behold. Treating Hank like a lowly jobber you got to think that's plays with the ego of Hank, but Donovan remains unfazed. Oh, look at this. Blue Thunderbomb. We're really seeing two high-level insects at play here. You've got the unstoppable force that is Hardcore Hank versus the cunning, immovable object that is Donovan Hazard. Despite the plays by the Guild to try and take Donovan down, Donovan continues 
Torum gain, regain control here. And while Hank is doing everything he can to maintain pace here, it's definitely not been an easy one for, for Hank here. Oh, snake eyes and busting open. He's going for the pin. He might have just knocked Hank out. Two. Oh my God, that was a close one. And Donovan there starting to show some frustration now. As he can't seem to put Hank away. Hank's back up. Hank's back up. Oh, God. That move. That move is... Whoa. That's a fine line right there between legal and illegal move. And that is cutting it close, in my opinion. Never been a fan of that one. And now look at this. Going for that rear chin lock. The referee keeping a close eye on things here. Donovan trying to find a way out of this but he is definitely losing a little bit of steam these wrestlers have gone through a lot in this match oh look at this up in the over power bomb but look at this look at this hang with some punches there fights his way back down oh he tries to go to take the leg out but donovan make sure it doesn't happen boom with a black hole slam and now donovan hazard going for the discus punch the fact that hank Kicked out of the Gamma Spike is incredible because normally that is Donovan's super finisher. And the fact that he tried to put Hank away so in such a blase fashion. Donovan has truly come a ways since then. Hank, of course, has maintained his position as one of the top wrestlers in VGIW history. And that's why this is such an interesting power struggle right here in this match. Oh, man. Look at this. Big drop kick there to the back of the head. And now Hank looking for the knee. He's going for the knee. He's going to put this away. The knee. It's over. It's over. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. For oh, no. Donovan kicked out. Donovan kicked out. Both have kicked out of each other's finishers. And the crowd cannot believe it. Donovan with a huge headbutt. And now a big splash. And now look at this. Oh my goodness. What a slam. But Hank rising back up again. You know, I've compared Donovan to Kingpin before. This is like if the Kingpin fought Tombstone. Oh my God. Driving the leg down there. Good work there by Hank. And he's going again. He's going again. Oh, my God. Inhibiting the mobility of Donovan. Trying to stop any chance of a fight back here. He's going again. He's going again. My God, you could break the ankle. You could break the ankle doing that. Oh, here we go. Up in the air. Power bomb. Is this it? One, two, three. And the match is over. Hank wins. But my God, did he have to win that by the skin of his teeth. That was one of the toughest matches I have to imagine Hank has had in a long while. One on one anyway. That might be one of the toughest matches Hank has had in a long while. And it really shows you the way these two have evolved. Hank has maintained his position as one of the top wrestlers throughout the years, showing that with the victory here tonight, that he's still one of the top wrestlers. But Donovan has proven that he is on Hank's level. He may have lost, but my God, Hank, you could see, even in victory, he is frustrated with how difficult that win was to achieve. We're moving on now to two amazing high flyers as it's time for Samuel the Saviour to take on Wade Danielson. Here we go, two of the best high flyers in VGIW in my opinion. Coming down to the ring first is Samuel the Saviour, someone who was another rookie back in the day and has really found himself and his sense of identity you got to look at the way he looked back in the day. Samuel was definitely a lot more unsure of himself. He had some great ability, but he had not got it all together. Samuel now is a lot more fully featured. He's one of the most flippiest high flyers you've ever seen. 
and he's got a great bit of submission skills now as well. Samuel is far more capable than he's ever been and he's had some amazing matchups, some shock victories. He may not be a main event level player like his opponent Wade Danielson tonight, but Samuel has more than proven himself as a high level wrestler. And I gotta say Samuel, always entertaining to watch. His flipping and flying is second to none in my opinion. And he looks ready to go here against Wade Danielson. This should be a fun one. Here we go. Here comes the greatest high flyer in VGIW. Former world champion, Wade Danielson. And Wade Danielson, when he came back, it was a big deal. He returned to VGIW for its TV debut. And Wade has been one of the top level players ever since. Winning the world title, winning the championship briefcase to get... Yeah. Wait, did he win the championship briefcase? Sorry, it's been a while. It's been five years. It's a little hard to keep track of everything. But the point is, Wade has won some big name matches. He has been on the hunt for the Limitless title. He tried to be the first ever Limitless champion. It's been a fun time. It's been a fun time to watch Wade Danielson who has consistently proved himself to be a high-level contender. One of the best here in VGIW, in my opinion. In fact, we've seen this, tonight we've seen a lot of high-level, top-of-the-game competitors. We've seen legends like Herman. We've seen Hardcore Hank, Wade Danielson, Terry Adams, Aaron Storm, Donovan Hazard, People who have significantly risen their stocks or proved themselves to be the best from day one have been maintained that position. And of course, we've got the Reaper and the Phantom after this for the main event. Oh, here we go. Oh, Wade Danielson. So effortless with the way he can just fly through the air. But he's up against a fellow high flyer and someone who's far more sure of, him, far more sure of himself in Samuel here. So this match isn't going to be as clear cut as it was back then. There's the kick out. Very nicely done. Samuel racing up to the top rope here. Springing up. Oh! The way with the dodge and Samuel crashes and burns. This is the thing. These two are very great high flyers. They're very quick, very nimble. They know how to deal with each other. Wade especially. Look at this. Going for a... Oh my god, I don't even know what that was, but that was cool. Here we go, going for a pin here. But that's way too early in my opinion. Oh, but that was close. So I can see why Wade thought it was going to be it. Oh, there's a kick there from Samuel, who rushes to his feet. But Wade, going for the Pele. Oh, Samuel didn't have an answer for that. And so Wade, maintaining control so far in this one. Oh, look at this. Springboard Moonsault. Springboard Moonsault, and Wade is firmly in the driver's seat. Wade is racing ahead right now, and Samuel doesn't seem to have an answer for what Wade is doing at the moment. Oh, he's calling for Samuel to rise to his feet. Here we go. Oh, my God. Wade Danielson, whenever he has a match, it's, like a, it's just like a highlight reel. Some great showcases. It's why he, I found so entertaining when he became VGIW Men's World Champion. But now Samuel in control here, looking to finally maintain some control in this matchup. Look at that. With zero momentum, he's able to do a full shooting star press. That is what is so impressive about Samuel. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Samuel showing that he can fly just as easily as Wade can. Oh, that's good. Samuel, very confident right now. Wade's back up. It's nice strikes there. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, look at this. Taking him to the outside. Samuel might be in trouble. Here we go. Through the eye of a needle with that DDT. That, oh, that was incredible. That torpedo DDT landed perfectly. And the crowd is loving this. And they've got to be careful of the can out. But right now, they are absolutely 
The fans are getting their money's worth here tonight. Look at that. Trying to slow Samuel down. In when when in speed is both of these wrestlers' greatest assets. Slowing one of them, you know, one slowing the other down really will swing the momentum of the match more than anything else. Because that can really, like, when speed, if it's speed versus speed, you don't want to be slowed down. Wade restarting the count of the match. I don't think, Wade definitely does not want to win by count out. Oh! Nice work there by Samuel with the, with the escape and the back of the knee being attacked. And look at this, stretching the leg out there. Good work there by Samuel. And a shooting star press. That was like a message being sent. Slowing down Wade, perhaps, and then showing that what Wade did was good, but it wasn't going to slow Samuel down. Very interesting. Now Samuel actually taking a moment to get a breathe. But, but now Wade coming back into the ring where Samuel is waiting. Here we go. Nice grapple. Oh, look at that. Kick to the midsection. And now, boom, spiking him on the head. Good work there by Wade. And now, oh, here we go. Snapping the neck. Oh, good work there. Good work there. And now Wade up on the top rope. Could this be the end? 450. Splash. He landed on the knees. Samuel. Samuel. He might have it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We might be about to see a huge shocker here. Wait a minute, Wade, taking Samuel into the corner. Kick on the leg there, trying to stop Samuel from fighting back. And now some stiff kicks to the chest. Oh, this is good from Wade right now. Nice work there. Oh, right in the face. Wait a minute, back on his feet. What? Oh my gosh. Oh, good Lord. What a takedown. And a Pele kick again. And this is, he's going for the pin. He's going for the pin. One, two, three. Wade wins. Wade wins. So far, every match in this has been one to one in terms of the results. That's not what we were going for when we did this. But my God, it really shows you that even though everyone has massively improved, sometimes, like when that happens, if someone's already one of the best of all time, well, improving just continues to, to make that like they are almost assured to re you know, retain that status quo. It's not a surefire thing. And so we've seen that these wrestlers have had to put uh, maybe a bit more effort in than they had to back in the day, five years ago. But it's really proven that they are still some of the best of all time. With just one more match to go, this has been an amazing celebration of five years of VGIW. Like I said, we got one more match to go. Let's go on to our main event. Here we go. It's time for the main event of the evening as the Phantom takes on the Reaper, the Forces of Darkness, closing out our fifth anniversary celebration. Oh, this is going to be good. A main event for the ages. And i got to say, the Phantom has done a great job at rising his stock in VGIW. Similar to Donovan, maybe not someone who's won big name championships, but someone who has consistently remained a persistent threat to opponents. And because of that, the Phantom has continued to be one of the, t one of the more fearsome wrestlers in VGIW in my opinion. Across these five years, he has never slipped too far down. He's consistently made sure that if he's going down, he's going to drag everyone else down to hell with him. The Phantom has gained the forces of the likes of Blood and Gore by his side. And I've got to say, it's always been interesting to see the Phantom. But let's look back at the old days of the Phantom. He was in touch with those darker sides, but he hadn't yet fully embraced it. But I've heard the Phantom say that those encounters with the Reaper were the, were the force that pushed him close to the dark side. I've talked to the Phantom, and between 
his matches with the Reaper, which showed him how powerful the Dark Side is, combined with the failure he had in the hunt for the Limitless title. He wanted to achieve greater power, and so he fully, he fully embraced being the Phantom and being on the Dark Side. And while there is respect for the Reaper, I'm sure that there is still some resentment towards the world champion. The Reaper, the top wrestler here in VGIW, our world champion, making his way to the ring to duke it out once again with the Phantom. And let me tell you, this is going to be interesting. The Reaper, one of the wrestlers here who from day one was one of the top wrestlers in VJW. In fact, the more things change, the more they stay the same. The Reaper was world champion in episode one of VGRW. He is world champion here today. Five years on. And the Reaper is still one of the most fearsome wrestlers to ever step foot in that ring. And after tonight, he'll be heading to the World League Tournament to defend his title, much like he did five years ago. Will he be successful unlike then? That's an interesting question to propose. But let's look back. And the Reaper has maintained himself fairly consistently, similar to the likes of Hank. The Reaper, an ever-present force here in the world of BGIW. The ultimate king of darkness. The Reaper has one of the largest targets on his back as everyone wants to take him down, take him out, steal his throne, steal his world title from his cold, dead hands. And that's what makes the Reaper so compelling because try as many might, many fail. It has driven some like Hank to madness knowing that he has yet to beat the Reaper. The Phantom, driven to the f to, driven from being someone who dabbled in the dark side to being fully enveloped in the dark side thanks to his interactions with the Reaper. The Reaper permanently changes people. The Reaper's long-standing effects on many wrestlers is felt throughout his five years on the channel as he lays the smack down on the Phantom. I don't know the Reaper's feelings on the Phantom. I don't know what his feelings are on the Phantom. But... Oh! The Reaper treats everyone the same. Good guy, bad guy. When it comes to the Reaper, when that bell rings, all that matters is that the Reaper is going to hunt you down. Oh man. Oh, what a throw there from the Reaper. Oh no. Oh my god. Pinfall. Whoa, but an instant kick out there. And the Reaper seemed a little shocked. Oh my god! Snapping the neck there! But the Phantom bounces back. Now the Phantom, back before he fully embraced the dark side, was definitely far less capable of taking on someone like the Reaper. But that has changed. Oh! What an elbow drop. Now the Phantom will also be in the World League Tournament. And a fun fact, the Phantom has been in every World League Tournament. This is what I mean about how even though the Phantom maybe doesn't get many big name victories, the Phantom has remained a consistent threat. The Phantom consistently proves that he can fight to that level by consistently getting into that tournament. That tournament is a big opportunity, but the fact that he's been able to do that for all four World League tournaments, finding his way in, that shows a level of dedication and skill that maybe many cannot hold and maintain long term. And the Phantom now looks like he's going to go for a suplex. Oh, a lot 
What a force in that one. Very nicely done. Now grabbing the Reaper. Look at this. Taking the Reaper down. Pushing down on the Reaper here. Oh! Square on the back. And now an elbow drop. Good work by the Phantom. And now look at this. Grappling and taking the Reaper into the ropes. Oh, what a chest chop. And now look at that. Taking the leg into the ropes. Using the rope for leverage. And now, oh, the Reaper now fighting back. Irish whip over the ropes. The Phantom clinging on. Ooh, punching and working his way back into the ring. Oh, but the days and, you know, the days look on the Reaper only lasted for a very short amount of time. So that big haymaker took out the Phantom, took him down. But the Phantom once again back in control. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. This really is a hell of a power struggle. Any momentum, either wrestler seems to be getting on the other, appears to only be short-lived. Oh, what a strike. But it seems like it's only a matter of time before the other bounces back to regain control. We are seeing a major power struggle between two of the leading forces of darkness here in VGIW. You've got the King of Darkness in the Reaper. But the Phantom, for many, has to be at least the second in command. And now the Reaper awaits to see if the Phantom will rise or if the Phantom is already done. The Reaper calling to the Phantom. The Phantom rises to his feet, but the Reaper waits no longer. Oh, that strike there, knocking the Phantom off his feet. And now stretching the Phantom out here with that rear chin lock. The knee pressed against the back for added leverage, added pressure, and a letting go. And it's not looking good for the Phantom right now. Oh, an elbow to the top of the head, to the crown. Oh, but the Phantom beginning to finally be able to fight back again. What an uppercut there. Staggering the Reaper, but the Reaper not going down, but that DDT does it. Bringing the Reaper back to his feet yet again. What an uppercut. And again, stiff strikes. And again with a DDT. Count of seven. Oh, nice work there. Staggering the Reaper. Count of eight. They've got to, the Reaper's got to get back in. Oh, the Phantom though. Resetting the count. I think that was a message being sent by the Phantom. Trying to show that he's on the same level. And it looks like the Reaper sees that. Duly noted. Here's me doing what you can do. With that vicious DDT. These two going for tit for tat right now. Very interesting. And the Reaper there. Almost trying to show the referee that the count he's doing doesn't matter in this great fight. Oh, what a slam. What a slam. Oh, but the Phantom reawoken. Stiff strikes. But wait a minute. Look at this. Boom! With the STO. And now, Irish Whip throwing the Phantom across the ring. The Reaper getting back in and slitting the throat. A sign to the Phantom that this match will soon be over. Once again, resetting the count. These two are not about to let this match end by count out. Oh, and you've got to think, resetting the count isn't just an establishment of dominance. I'm, that's part of it for certain. There's got to be a certain level of respect there as well. Not only is it dominant by resetting the count to keep it going, but it's a sign of respect that they think too highly of each other to let the match end via a count out. These two wrestlers, these two forces of darkness are not going to let the other lose in such an undignified way. If they're gonna win, they're going to win properly. Look at this. Boom, driving him face first again on the outside. 
and now oh stiff strike there the fan having the lead against the barricade for added support and now look at this oh my goodness and wait a minute oh big boot there and the referee seems a bit hesitant to count them given how many times they've reset the count the phantom just sent into the steel steps now the reaper actually taking a second to gather his breath count of seven and again resetting the can like i said i think that there's too much respect here between these two to let the match end via a count out if this match is going to end it will be via pinfall or submission but you can see that these wrestlers, they're getting weary. And I think the Phantom, wearier than anything else. Oh my God! And how can you not be? As much as the Phantom is a huge force of darkness, he's going against the King. The King of Darkness. Royalty here in the you know world of dark gimmicks. Oh my God! Amongst them all, the Reaper rules over all. Victory isn't impossible, but it's going to be damn hard. And look at that. The Reaper getting back in at the count of eight. And the Phantom getting back in. And here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. No way. Darkest days. There's no way. There's no way. Oh my God. One. Two. No. Kicking out from darkest days. The Phantom. He has got to be frustrated. Dead man's hatchet! Dead man's hatchet! Oh my god. Oh my god. The Phantom. Giving everything he's got here. Oh, but the Reaper dodges! The Reaper dodges! He's not getting hit with another Darkest Days or a Cataclysm. He's already been hit with two of the big finishes. What is going on here? No. No way. The Reaper with the apron pile driver and you saw there he didn't go full talk with it the reaper not looking to end the career of the phantom but no doubt has done a major impact to the phantom there from that one. Oh, an elbow drop there and this match is just incredible oh Busted open there. Oh my god. Oh, what a slam. Kind of five. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the Reaper stopped himself there. Stiff kick there to the leg. They've got to be careful. Seven. And the Reaper. Getting back in now. Oh, nice work there by the Phantom. DDT. And now, going to bring down the pain there. Bring the knee down. Oh, look at this. Some stiff punches to the face. To the skull of the Reaper. And now, stretching the Reaper out. Trying to break the Reaper. He's made him tap. He's made him tap. I can't believe it. The Reaper has surrendered. To the Phantom! Oh my god! That's gotta be the one. I think that's the only match that's had a different victor to five years ago. The Phantom has just beaten a multi time the current world champion! That is incredible! What a result! Now I wanna thank you so much for watching the fifth anniversary of VGIW what a fight what a main event if you enjoyed leave a like on this video subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos on the channel comment down below your favorite match and share this video with your friends and we will see you next time for the world league tournament <laughs>